Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Amanda. I do hope that you're well. Today we're going to be going through an activation linked into the 1111 energy. You may very well be watching this on the 11th of November or near to that date, or you might have found this randomly at any other point in the year, particularly if you're being drawn to the 1111 energy, you might be seeing it a lot, whether it be every time you look at a clock, it's 1111, seeing 1111 in other ways, whether it's through signs. Um, there are so many ways that spirit can get our attention. For me, the 1111 energy is very linked into to Archangel Metatron, who is one of my main guides. And those of you that have been following me for quite a long time know that every November I try and bring through a new activation and a new teaching linked into this special portal, which is always about an upgrade, always about an upgrade. And every year, the subject of the 1111 Gateway Portal differs a little bit. Um, and this year, particularly, we're going to be focusing on the energy of Kundalini and untapped energy untapped resource that we have within ourselves. I'd like to break this down into a very everyday language, a very practical application. Uh, Kundalini rising, Kundalini awakening is a whole big subject in itself. A whole library of books and videos are available on that. Over the years, I think it's felt to me very much like when I first started to teach about Merkaba, um, which is that there seems to be a lot of fear associated and a barrier, uh, rightly or wrongly, linked into, for example, activating Merkaba or in the subject matter of today's video, awakening our Kundalini. Some of you may know people who've had very sudden kundalini awakening moments or, or chapters in their life. You may very well be one of those people yourself. And that is a valid experience. It's something that some people do go through, a very sudden awakening of, the, of this energy. But for many other people, it happens in a more gradual way. And it isn't anything to be frightened of, particularly, and I can only talk about the teaching and the energy that I'm going to be bringing through in this video, because of course there are many different ways to activate your Kundalini, and I'm not going to be talking about all of those. I'm just talking about what um, Archangel Metatron is asking me to deliver today. So in this video, this is a safe way to start to understand tap into your own kundalini energy within yourself. It might enhance a practice that you already do, confirm um, the energy that you already know is within you and you're well used to working on, and also give you an upgraded understanding or a different dimensional look at it. Or you might be somebody that's coming to this completely uh, new, not understanding anything. Uh, the activations within this video and the energy that's coming from it will be targeted so it is right for you. So uh, that's important that you understand that. that There's a safe, sacred space that we have created here together. Um, so I'm assuming that most of you have probably watched the last video that I did uh, only a couple of days ago which was called, um, which was linked into uh, the pole shift, but was also talking about the three north, uh, the three norths, which are converging in the UK at the moment. If you haven't watched that video, you might like to go back and have another look at it because we are going to be taking it a little bit further and talking about the rise and the healing of these three masculine archetypal templates that we have within us, which I mentioned in the last video, that of the knight, 
the Viking and the Samurai. And I explained that as multidimensional creatures, which is what we are, we all have either been all of those three or been a fractal thereof. Um, one of you just now in the comments on that video said to me how perfect it is that we were going to be doing this work um, around Armistice Day on the 11th. And to be honest, I hadn't actually registered that that is what we were doing, but it is. Um, so this also ties in very well to helping to heal the war wounds. I talked about healing the battle scars in my last video and the fact that this uh, kundalini serpent energy arising from the earth star chakra in the UK, rising through the land over the next three and a half years, was going to be showering the whole globe with this uh, new energy that is so needed at this present time, which is about healing the battle wounds. Okay, so we're going to be doing a bit of that. Um, there will be a short meditation or visualization um, technique that I take you through at the end of this video. I'll put a timestamp on it so you can maybe revisit it again if you'd like to. Well, I'm going to do it at the end because otherwise it's going to take you into a place where you're not going to be able to really listen or register what I'd like to bring through now. Um, because, yes, I'd like to explain a little background on Kundalini for the purposes of this video, but equally I also want to show you the most beautiful Kundalini quartz that I bought specifically for us. And I want to say for us, because even though I'm the... Um, the, the holder of it, um, it was bought with the specific intention of this particular video. Um, and its energy will come through every everything that's happening here as well. Show you that in a moment. We're also going to do a couple of cards, some of which I've already pulled off camera, all of which confirmed what I thought we probably were going to be doing. Okay, so the first thing to do then is I'd like to... Um, paraphrase a very short video that I watched this morning um, from, uh, where's my notes, from Sadaguru um, and I will link it below. One of the masters of Eastern esoteric information, wisdom, energy. He was talking about Kundalini very much from a yogic perspective which is not where I am going to be going today. But indeed, of course, yoga is one way that you can raise kundalini, um, as well as many other ways, breath work, movement. Um, but these were a few of the nuggets that I pulled out of his video that I wanted to share today because it links into what we're doing here. What I really liked, firstly, about his explanation of kundalini energy was he was saying that it is in the tone of my voice that's coming to you today. If you are listening to me in an active alert state, you are also in a kundalini energy moment in the same way that I am in a kundalini energy moment right now because I have the energy to, to deliver this to you. He was talking about the fact that the open blossom flower is an example of kundalini energy awakening the dog barking. Usually Bella would bark at this point, but she's gone for a walk, but you know, you get my point. What he's trying to say is that um, Kundalini, which is basically life force energy that we all have available to us in every moment of every day and every living thing has within it as well, um, is seen in the normal everyday things. It's not just something that can be um, witnessed and uh, noticed and observed when we are sitting, maybe, I don't know, in some monastery on a hill, in silence, on our own, you know, having gone through some extraordinary activation process at a sacred site. That's not to say that you can't do it that way. And that might be a very beautiful thing to do. But he's trying to explain to us that Kundalini is something which is um, is everyday also. 
He then goes on to explain the fact, however, that he explains it like this. Um, he asks the question, and I'm going to pose the question to you as well, which is, are you ready for it? Now, that might seem a bit of a contradiction because I've just said it's an everyday occurrence. It's in the dog barking. It's in me talking. It's in you listening. Hold on. Now you're saying, are you ready for it? Because what he goes on to explain very articulately is that there are levels to it. OK, there, it's like a, what I'm being shown. It's like an unboxing. OK, so it's like you keep unboxing and then there's another box inside and then there's another box inside and another box inside. You know, the um, old what were they called Russian dolls where you, you know, the wooden Russian dolls and you take off one layer and then there's another smaller one and another smaller one up in, inside that. And in many ways, of course, the fact that they get smaller, actually there's, there's more potency with regards to the essence. You're getting to the essence. So although it's an everyday thing, Kundalini energy, when we truly awaken it, in a larger way, in a conscious way, um, we have to be aware of what level we are tapping into, okay? What level we're tapping into. Um, and also, do we have the necessary, what he calls circumstances and environment in our life to be able to cope with the potency of kundalini energy that we have tapped into that we are then that we then are and that we then take into different areas of our life because nature of the beast is that it changes uh interesting i say the beast it changes the nature of man animalistic into a more more in touch with their true spiritual self their light body um but he makes the point, this is the last point I really want to say about his work, which is that when people approach a subject such as Kundalini uh, yoga, he's talking about, every, he says, no one wants to start with A, everyone wants to start with Z. And what he means by that, I suppose, is that maybe Kundalini yoga, or I want to say Kundalini practice techniques in general, have almost got this tag of... Um, I don't know, uh, being somehow, you know, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So we want to start there rather than understanding we have to walk the whole rainbow before we get there. Metatron put it in a different way for me today. He said it's like uh, wanting to drive a sports car when you haven't even yet passed your test. OK, so let's repeat that. So tapping into the highest concentration of Kundalini energy, the, the box that's inside all of the other boxes, the Russian doll, is like wanting to drive the sports car when you haven't passed your test. Um, and of course, that's an ego thing. And actually, the truth is you can't get to the more potent energy that you have within yourself um, until you have wrestled with your ego <laughs> and got it in control so that actually you're coming at it from a much more heart-centered spiritual place um so yeah i'll link that video be below as i say it's only 11 minutes but i think it's a really good introduction um and let's now move into the phase of this video where i'd just like us to be gently stimulating our kundalini energy uh, rather than um, prompting it in any way that's going to be uncomfortable for you, because there's no point of that. Let's go back to why we're doing this right now. We're doing this because we're at 11, 11. Um, and it is a gateway. And I, I will just say something about gateway at this point, because I was asked the question yesterday. Um, and there are many people that are newly awakening on this path and everybody's very warmly welcome to my channel. But sometimes I assume that people understand and they don't. And that's not a problem at all to just maybe go over a basic here. What is a gateway? A gateway, Metatron is saying here, is actually an opportunity. He's wanting us to view it as an opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity to level up upgrade, learn something more about yourself, 
acquire something extra to maybe go beyond where you've been before in terms of a level of understanding or a degree of light that you carry. So see it as an opportunity. See it as an opportunity. Um, a book just caught my eye as I'm talking to you. And it's the book Zero Limits by Joe Vitale. Now, I'm not going to go into why about that book here. It's more about the title, Zero Limits. Um, one of you, very kindly actually, wrote a lovely comment, thank you, uh, on the last video, where you said something along the lines of, and this isn't me going off on an ego thing, there's a reason why I'm saying this. They said, thank you very much, Amanda, for your video. One of the things I like about you is you've got no ceiling. What they meant by that was the fact that you're willing to explore different things in videos, subjects. Um, and I thought about it and I thought, yeah, I've never really thought about it that way, but that is sort of where I'm at. And it's probably because of the guide that I have, which is Archangel Metatron, who's also here for you. And he's asking us to start to see gateways or opportunities as it being of zero limit, um, of un the, there is no ceiling, okay? It's as though we box ourselves in as human beings and think we only can do so much or we can only reach a certain goal. Um, we can only be a certain limit, but I'm being told there are zero limits and there is no ceiling here. So that's really what this gateway energy is about. Right, without further ado, I want to show you this amazing crystal. Um, I'm also just gonna put some incense on. So if you see some smoke going, let's just build up the energy nicely. And you see, this is what you do when you're tapping into Kundalini. You should be building up the energy slowly. Another thing that Sadhguru is saying, and it's, I completely agree with, is the fact that um, it's a devotional practice in many ways. It's not about just dipping into a video and suddenly getting a rush of it. And I know, I know, you, I know most people understand that. But it's to do with um, tending to the needs and the environment that we have around us and our day-to-day -day life to stimulate us on a regular basis. Now, the analogy that I was shown, I'll come to the crystal in a minute, the analogy I was shown by Metatron earlier with regards to this um, tending to the uh, energy within ourselves. And remember what we're talking about here. This is the Metatron card. This is the Kundalini energy. Okay, it sits here in, in the base, waiting to be activated, waiting to be fired up. I was shown an old um, steam train, uh, an old steam train. Okay, and old steam trains, there used to be a driver in the front cabin and they would have they would be having to put coals or whatever it was into the steam into the train's engine to fire it up so that it would run along the tracks and i want you to start to see yourself a bit like that old steam train um and what you're doing is you're basically being asked the question are you ready but it's also what are you putting into your engine think about the analogy that metatron gave earlier about um, us wanting to get into a sports car, okay, but we can't necessarily even drive yet. Now let's take it down another level and think about ourselves a bit like a car. Um, we need the right fuel to run effectively, to be able to get to our destination. So what is the fuel that you are putting into your body? This isn't just foods, it's to do with thoughts it's to do with the people that you're mixing with. It's what you're reading. Um, it's what you're writing. Your whole life should be a devotional practice to firing up the engine, principally, of course, also with the energy of love, so that you, you're properly fueled. There's that old expression, isn't there, that you are what you eat as well. So now let's think about that from a Kundalini perspective. And it's not just to do with food, it's to do with anything that you ingest, energies that you ingest. It's why I'm so hot on boundaries and having boundaries with people and saying no and having a clear out of people as well from time to time. 
because it's to do with the right environment for the engine to work, i.e. me, okay, i.e. you. So really just think about that point before we move on. Um, okay, let's now go to this crystal. I have to say, this is going to be a bit of a wow moment, I think. I mean, it's pretty impressive that, isn't it? I, when Metatron told me a couple of days ago that we were going to be talking about Kundalini, is it in focus, guys? Yeah. Let me see if I can put my camera torch on it to get a bit of light on it. Um, yeah, look at that. I just found this crystal online. It's called Kundalini Quartz. It's actually a form of uh, raw citrine. Just feel the energy of that. It's raw citrine. The thing that differentiates uh, kundalini, kundalini quartz from other types of quartz is that it comes from the Congo. Okay, it's mined, it's ethically hand mined from the Congo. Um, and particularly this specimen that I've managed to get my hands on for us just feels I mean it looks a bit like an arrowhead actually doesn't it now I'm looking at it it looks a bit like an arrowhead um it also is shaped like a fan I'm being shown it as a fan now I've got a fan somewhere Do I need to say something here hold on <laughs> Metatron says this is a good illustration of Kundalini. We'll come back to the crystal in a moment. Imagine yourself that you are like the fan. You can operate fine day to day like that. You have this amount of energy running through your body at any one time, uh, helping you to walk, talk, do your job, cook the dinner, tend to the kids. You might feel tired occasionally, but that's you. That's your energy body. When you are tapping into your Kundalini energy, you actually become the full, <laughs> the full thing. I'm being shown the peacock here for obvious reasons, okay? The peacock as an animal totem. And if you think about peacocks as well, they know, they know their power, okay? They know their power. Um, they know the energy that they hold, the light that they hold. So this is a good illustration, the fan. So yeah, this crystal anyway, Kundalini Quartz. Um, let's tap into it now and see what it wants to say to us. I'm just going to have to hold it for one moment whilst we do this. Okay, so the 11, 11 energies. A splintering off of groups is the first thing I'm hearing. A splintering off of groups. I'm being shown... Um, that this is not for everyone. Uh, these practices, these energies, the areas that we're getting into now, I'm talking about sort of the teachings on my channel, for example, they are of a certain frequency and a high frequency that is not for everyone. Um, it's the whole thing about you can't drive a sports car if you haven't passed your test. Um, so there's a splintering off. There are some people within our lives that are going to be leaving us. Um, they are not at the same frequency as yourself. Um, they may very well be affecting your energy adversely. Um, is the first message that this crystal is giving. I'm also just hearing two words, which is rising up, rising up. Um, a rising up energy within ourself so that we can scale the peaks of achievement or whatever it is that we're here to do in this lifetime. There's also something coming through here about the dichotomy that exists at the moment between a fast paced world, time speeding up, but the desire to also draw back, slow down, simplify. So the kundalini energy that wishes to rise 
and the untapped areas to come in for you, this 1111 gateway and going forward is linked not into speeding up your life even more. It's like, it's not about becoming the Duracell bunny where it's like, oh my God, I've got all this energy and now I'm going to do this and now I'm going to do that and now I'm going to, no, 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 no. It's more about concentrated potency of energy rising up so that we can do what we're meant to be doing in a focused, astute, clear, powerful, meaningful, aligned, authentic way. Can you feel the difference of that? So it's really interesting. It's it's actually helping us to not be so scattered, but it comes from us actually unfurling. Unfurling, being like the peacock, showing our true colours, showing all the energy that we have, but yet using it in a very focused, strategic way, a powerful way. I feel like I've got Metatron speaking through me here. It's time for the warriors within to refocus, reform and fight for love. And it's as though we've been distracted by so many different things that have been competing for our time, including people that are not in alignment with us anymore. And there is no judgment on that. What we say at this juncture is thank you, thank you, thank you for being in my life. Thank you for what you taught me. Thank you for what you showed me. Thank you for what you gave me. And that can also be through adversity, not necessarily the big shiny present with the bow. Thank you. And then you move on. And I'm now being shown a battle scene. And it's as though for the next stage of our development, both personal and collective, we have to leave some on the battlefield effectively that are not willing to progress to the next front. And the ones at the back that are being left are the ones that are still wanting to stay in the energy of war and hostility and fighting and judgment and blame. And I'm just feeling this energy of us picking ourselves up with the three combined warrior energies within us, knights, viking, samurai, and it's as though all three merge, we rise, we walk forward with determination and love. Can you feel that? There's also an energy here of realignment within ourself, of Father, God and Holy Spirit. If that doesn't resonate for you with your belief system, don't force it. If it does, allow it. There is a rising up of the divine masculine and the divine feminine within each of us. A refocusing, a merging, a higher potency. And we move forward. There is a claiming of our birthright. The citrine, raw citrine, the arrowhead, abundance, true abundance. Coming forward at a time in our world where we're being told there is none. We're entering an energy of lack and poverty and victimhood and depression and recession and a downward, downward, downward spiral. That is what you are being led to believe, but it is a lie. The true nature of the universe is always forever forward, forever expanding, forever creating. We create our reality. 
Throw off the shackles and the programming of the past. Throw off the shackles and the programming of the present, which are negating the, the potency and the beauty of the future. Align to the highest version of the future that there can be. Align to the highest form of the future for this world and for yourself. As we look into the crystal's face, we see all of the different facets of who we are. All of the different sides of our being. The truly majestic, multidimensional facets of who you are. That what catches the light at any one time will differ according to circumstance and light. We seed the new, we rise up. Be with your body for one moment. Feel into the energy of the earth beneath your feet. Breathe in the air around you. Relax your shoulders. Relax your toes. Become aware of all aspects of your physical body. Your skin, your bones the water within you, the blood running through your veins. Spend a moment to be thankful for the body that you have, the vehicle that houses your soul. Spend a moment of profound gratitude for the body that you have, the life that you have, the energy that you have, and the breath that you have within your body. Take a moment of profound gratitude for the energy that you have now, that is enabling you to listen, to feel, to be. And become aware, as Archangel Metatron approaches and is around us all, of the opportunity that is here today to tap into even greater levels of allness, of uniqueness, of individuality, of expression, of emotion, and this comes via the energy, via the fuel that is running us, the light mixed with the blood, mixed with the bone, mixed with the flesh. God and flesh made manifest within you infinite energy within you. Become aware of your feet and the energy coursing up from Mother Earth. Feel the pulse of the, of the Earth beneath you, the power of the Earth beneath you, the heartbeat and the throb of Mother Earth. the extraordinary depth of her core, the magnifold and multitude layers that make up all that she is. 
feel her security, her roots, you and her becoming one. And then drawing attention to your legs, your knees, your hips, your thighs. Feel the energy flowing up. Feel the energy flowing up, rising until we get to the base chakra. Tailbone, energy, base chakra, pulsing red, governing relationships, safety, security, finance, life force itself. And to that we say, I rise. I rise. I rise above any limitations, any challenges that are seated there. I rise. And the energy moves. Areas of stagnation and blockage being gently shifted aside. Kundalini energy awakening, already there. Its potency increasing. And the energy moves up now to the sacral, the area of our body where we store so much of our hurt, the shocks, the betrayal, the abuse, in this lifetime and many other lifetimes. Governing so many areas, our fertility, our creativity, how secure we feel in our body, how we feel about our appearance, how we judge ourselves, how we judge each other. And into that we say, I rise, I rise. I rise above any challenge, any block, any problem that is there. And the energy moves and flows. And the blocks are shifted and nudged aside. And the Kundalini energy swirls and moves, stimulating the sacral. Gently rising, I rise. We breathe in to our stomach, deep belly fulls of air and out. And we connect to our solar plexus, our power center, our battery, our engine. Noting if it feels depleted or full. Our areas linked to confidence, self-confidence, how we approach life, whether we are assured or fearful, anxious or able to move past that. And we say, I rise, I rise. I rise and the Kundalini energy moves and flows up through the solar plexus, boosting our power center, boosting our light, moving aside, nudging aside challenges, problems and blocks in this area. New energy flowing in, your energy, your own fuel, filling you up, making you feel complete, linking you to the divine light within yourself. I rise, I rise, I rise. 
moving up to the heart chakra where we store the infinite ability to love unconditionally, untapped in many, where we store memories of our loves, our relationships, those that are with us, those that have gone, but also which holds the memory of whether we love ourselves, whether we care and nourish ourselves. And into this area, the heart, I rise, I rise, I rise. Beautiful Kundalini energy moving up through the chakras, up through the spine, at the front, at the back. I rise, I rise, I rise. I rise in love. I rise in joy. I rise in hope. I rise in unity. I rise in consciousness. I enter the gateway of my own heart. I rise to meet my highest self, my truest self. I rise, I rise, I rise. Kundalini energy moving up now through the higher heart into the throat chakra. Our communication center where we're heard, where we're listened to, where we communicate to others, where we pray, where we sing, where we chant, where we write, where we express, where we are sometimes silenced into this energy center, Kundalini energy, your energy, rising up to the throat chakra like a beautiful fountain. I rise, I rise, I rise. If you need to, just tilt your throat, tilt your head a little bit upward just to create some space there in the throat chakra. I rise, I rise, I rise. Repeat that with me. I rise, I rise, I rise. Just allowing the energy to move there, to take away any blocks that are there, any challenges that are there, to move the energy gently, gently, gently. Placing this kundalini quartz now at your throat, very gently just laying it on the throat. It's comfortable, just helping that area to expand. Like the accordion box, just seeing it now, like the fan, starting to be able to take in more air, breathe more easily. I rise, I rise, I rise. I'm now going to place this Kundalini energy quartz just here on the higher heart between your throat and your heart and it's going to rest there and allow the energy now to rise up further from the throat to the back of your skull, the altar major, allowing that to be cleared very gently. Maybe just circling with your fingers, just circling with your fingers at the base of your skull, very, very gently, just a little circular motion, three times and then stop. And then just leave your fingers there on the back of the skull. Three fingers gently there. I rise, I rise, I rise. And then you're being asked to give permission for this energy to flow up to the highest point, the third eye and the crown. And just go into your heart give permission 
and then just allow this energy to gently work its way up to the third eye. Move your three fingers from the base of your skull to the point on your third eye and just tap gently onto the third eye. As we repeat together, I rise, I rise, I rise. I see, I see, I see. Feeling the energy now flowing out, fanning out across the skull, the back of the skull, and now to the top of the skull. Touch the top of the skull gently, reverently, respectfully. Feel Archangel Metatron's presence behind you as he just gently blows onto the crown chakra. After three, the energy of his breath blowing on the crown will just clear away any cobwebs, any debris, any energetic interference that is there. One, two, three. Feel your energy coursing through you now from your very feet to the top of your skull to the space just above your head. Feel your spine. Become aware of the energy as it rises up the spine. And be open to the opportunities, the gifts, the blessings of what it is to be human on this planet at this time. Know that you have all the energy that you need within you and that you rise. You rise. You rise. Take a deep breath into your body, please and out once more breathe in and out once more breathe in and out and open your eyes I'm going to send an emerald green energy around you now. Emerald green. It has the energy and the uh, essence of vetiver, a very grounding energy. Emerald green, you can just feel that around you now. Imagine that you're standing on an emerald green forest floor in front of the most beautiful, huge pine tree. And just breathe in the energy of the pine. Feel the energy of the green earth beneath your feet. And become aware of how much taller you feel. How much taller you feel. How much more at one with the tree and the universe you feel. I'm going to take some water now. You might like to take some water before we just move on to complete this video. Okay. Okay, really just take a nice deep breath in if you need to. Okay, so 
Hopefully you're all back with me now. Had a little bit of water, a bit of breath, um, and a bit of the emerald. Let's just have a little bit more of this. Very, very grounding energy, the emerald spray. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of cards now that I drew before I came on to do this video today. Um, and let me show you what they are. They're from a deck called... Uh, Life Soul Vision Oracle by Romy, Ro Romy Weiser. Apologies if I'm saying your name wrong there. Thank you for the gift of them. Um, and I pulled these three. And then I'm going to pull another three, I think, on camera. But I'll show you what I pulled off camera. Um, <laughs> rather beautiful. Root Energy. Base Chakra. We've got the beautiful rose and it says root energy built from love, built from love. So every time you become aware of issues maybe relating to base chakra, bring in the energy of love, bring in the energy of the rose. And then we also have this one, which is the crown chakra. <laughs> As you can see, we've got a real Kundalini energy here, the root, the crown the seven chakras and it says activation of wisdom and then the third card was this which is the gathering which is the globe with the rainbow with the light coming down and this is all of us that are gathered online online right now watching this or whenever you are watching it a tribe of light workers a tribe of people that are rising that are rising that are seeding something very beautiful for our world. Um, I'd like to just go back, because we're talking chakras here, to what Metatron was saying earlier about you can't drive a sports car if you haven't passed your test. <laughs> you will have received whatever you were meant to receive from that activation we just did, okay? But the truth is, of course, that the more preparation we put in and the more day-to-day -day practice we put in, we get a little bit extra because we're more finely tuned. That's basically what it is. So the regular maintenance of our chakra system is critically important during these days and is the foundation. In many ways, it's the test, not the test, but the analogy of the car, you know, to drive the sports car, i.e. really tap into all these potent kundalini energies. Because that was only one box that we just unwrapped there, okay? There's more and more and more. Remember the Russian doll. But if you can just maintain a really healthy chakra system, um, it's the foundation for everything. How you maintain a healthy chakra foundation, there's again libraries of information out there. I have always worked with the energy of colour in particular. If you've been with me a long time, you know that. I've got a whole set of chakra sprays that we sell, you know, linked into all of the different colours and all the different chakras. From red, crimson at the base chakra, we've got tangerine blush, I think it's called, at the sacral. Golden citrine at the solar plexus, uh, pink lotus at the heart, jade at the higher heart, aquamarine at the throat, teal at the altar major, um, tanzanite at the third eye, silver at the crown, lavender at the soul star, and rose gold at the stellar gateway. And then, of course, all rooted by Archangel Sandalphon with the bronze at the earth star below. So colours is a way that I do it. But you can do it in other ways. It can be via working with crystals, working with breath, working with I don't know, yoga, I'm sure. I mean, so many practices out there. The most important thing is you just find something that works for you, okay? Um, and make it a regular practice. So those are the first three cards we've got. 
I'm going to pull another three from this deck and then I'm going to pull a couple of cards from my own Metatron deck. Okay, let's just go to this deck first though. Well, I must tell you, just a um, bit of lightheartedness in here. When I went down to make myself a drink before doing this video, this was calling me and wanted to be on my little altar. <laughs> it's actually crystallised ginger. It's because I'm going to make a Christmas cake at the weekend. That's why it was down there. But I mean, it doesn't have to be crystallised ginger because of course this has got sugar on it, which isn't really probably very good for you. But it was more the ginger aspect. Ginger, very warming. Ginger tea, brilliant uh, for, again, just stimulating the energies. Uh, I don't know whether ginger is a problem for anybody with different health concerns so maybe check it if you've got anything really wrong with you but uh, for most of us it's probably okay um, it's interesting actually I remember and I think I'm sure probably this is still something that is done when I was very sick you know morning sickness in pregnancy I used to drink a lot of ginger tea and um there's something in that, isn't there? Because, of course, you're, back, you're birthing something over a long period of time. Uh, you're incubating something over a long period of time. And at the end of the day, what we're doing here is we are birthing new energies within, within ourselves. It's like worlds within worlds. Worlds within worlds. Okay. Um, <laughs> as I said that, I pulled this card. I love this. Number one, I love it because it's card number 38. So three and eight make 11. But it also says energy conversations, energy conversations, because ultimately what we're having is an energetic conversation with ourself. When you tap into different, different um, portals within yourself, different unopened parts, different unopened packages of energy that you have within you, OK, it's it's about having a different conversation with yourself, because when you change the energy that's flowing through you, you are a different person. You see the world through different eyes. You have different conversations with yourself and with each other. There's such truth in that, such truth in that. Um, so that's the first card energy conversations let's have two more and I rather love the fact you know I was saying at the beginning about go go beyond zero limits break through the ceiling this this being this is us we've broken through the clouds here this is you know this is quite high <laughs> we're quite high here but high in the best way possible not through a synthetic substance okay not through something that's going to cause any harm, through being tapped into our God light, tapped into our divinity. Kundalini is linked into that. It's the true essence. It's the life force. It's from whence we came and where we go back to. It's life itself. And it's infinite, infinite energy that you have available to you. But what keeps us trapped is this, which is mirrors of the mind, because the mind will keep you trapped, that I can only go so high, I can only do this, etc. Your mind can be a trap. You need to break out of that. You need to break out of that. Our world needs to break out of that. That almost feels to me like the divine feminine, and she's like within the earth, she's just wanting to get out, escape. Let her out. Let her out of you. Let her, let her out of the next person. What I mean by that is that celebrate each other. Celebrate each other. Boy each other up. There's so much dissing down of people and negativity and criticism and judgment. And can you just feel how the energy drops as soon as we say that? Whereas when we're talking about celebrating others and boying people up, not from an egotistical perspective, from a place of I see your heart. I see who you are. I see your divinity. And then there's just this feminine energy that just bursts out. It bursts out. Um, let me pull one more card. Mm -hmm, right, that one. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. Well, I can because it's just the way spirit works. Hold on. Five and six make 11, don't they? Yeah, that's another 11 card. Okay, card 56. 
this is so perfect, guys. The Rainbow Dragon and the Wild Rose. You see the Kundalini energy, it's the serpent. But actually I've got my dragon spray here as well because I was, I was, I was feeling the dragon energy as well. The dragon, the serpent, the rising up of the rainbow tribe. That's why I mentioned my chakra sprays. Not because I'm just trying to sell them to you. It's because of the colours. I wanted to take you through the colours. From crimson to rose gold with pink lotus in the middle and aquamarine here. It makes my heart sing. The colours make my heart sing. For me, this is a way for us to stimulate our kundalini energy. And then let's bring in the energy, absolutely, of the dragon as well. And it's rising up through all those beautiful roses. Love it. <sighs> Love it. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just bring in the fire dragon here at this point okay this is the fire elemental from metatron metatron's fire dragon and i'm going to do something i don't normally do i'm going to overlay the fire spray with this one which is as you can see it's the rainbow ray because put the two together <laughs> put the two together and to me you've got that you've got the rainbow dragon right so let's now put a bit of this one this is rainbow ray and I'm sending it to you rainbow ray which is to do with upgrade and expansion upgrade and expansion and now we have the dragon the dragon <laughs> the upgrade the rainbow I rise, I rise, I rise. We are the dragon, we are the rainbow. We are the upgrade, my friends. We are the upgrade that the world is seeking. And you get to that point when you're tapping into all of that beautiful energy that is within you. The half of the time we don't even realize we've got. Okay, we create, this is, from my own deck. This is the um, flower of life. We create and we expand. And again, it's with the rainbow light. With the rainbow light. Okay, so one more card from the Metatron deck. For 11, 11 Metatron, final card. Well, there's two that want to come out. Okay. Oh, there's three that want to come out. I think these came out in my last video, didn't they? We've got earth. We've got air. We've got sandal fun. <laughs> sandal fun. Um, earth star chakra. Sandal fun. Um, gives us the grounding and the support, the support. We've got the energy of air and freedom. We've got the energy of air and freedom and song, and song, and treading gently. Just beautiful, beautiful energies. Um, I think to wrap this up, we're going to wrap it up with Archangel Sandalphon and the Earth Star. Let's just go to Sandalphon at this point as well. 11-11. I'm just being shown this image of, it's, it is a gate, but it's a, um, it's very ethereal. It's like I'm seeing this vapour. It's like cloud, it's like vapour. Um, swirling, swirling vapour. And there's this gate at the end of all this swirling vapour. And it feels very heavenly, for want of a better word. <laughs> but of course, remember, heaven is also available down on earth. And it's as though he's saying, of course, there's always another gateway. There's always another opportunity that everything always keep will come round again. So there's this thing about if you miss something the first time round, if you miss an opportunity, if you miss a gateway, if you feel somehow, I don't know, you missed out, 
that it always comes back around. It's like a magical land he's showing me. And it's just it's an equal opportunity here for everybody to get it, is what he's saying. For everybody to enter. It's not a race. Um, because ultimately everybody's born with this same untapped, untapped resource within them. Untapped energy. Um, so, do you know, I'm wondering what I actually said about this card in my own deck. So I think I'm going to read it to you. Hold on. It's a lot of work that goes into writing the book. So I think from time to time, let's go back to it. Let's not assume that uh, we can or I can remember what I've even said. Card number 35. We're going to end on this because this feels like it's also an activation in itself. You get a lovely book, actually, with my decks, with all the pictures. Really lovely. The publisher does such a good job. I'm so lucky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always say thank you when you're genuinely grateful for something. Right. OK. Last activation, guys, then for this video. I'm going to read you the words that go with this. Just allow the words to sink in to absorb the teaching and thank you very much for being here with me. It says, life is busy and you may be time poor. Sometimes you feel particularly weary, yet you are encouraged to go within and to realise the huge well of energy available to you to help support your path to enlightenment. It is there in your earthly vessel, the human body in which your eternal soul dwells like a burning furnace within you. The Kundalini fire energy depicted on this card needs tending and stoking. A fire that is forgotten will emit a quiet heat, but no real flames of passion or electrical current to awaken all that is available as raw primal energy, drive and insight. Become aware of the coiled serpent at your base chakra that this part of you is just as real as anything else. Make friends with it, be at peace with its presence and realise that within its coils, which wish to upfold upward, there is raw power and divine essence that is yours and yours alone. Use it to ignite passion, to inspire ideas or to receive spiritual truths. But first, allow it to flow up your spine, warming each part with its light and colour and energy. Tuning in now, ask yourself if you are aware of this vast energy reservoir within you. You can awaken it gently and train it via many practices. Meditation, yoga, movement, dance. A fifth dimensional energy and frequency will also naturally start to stir it and will give you an innate understanding of its location. Ask Metatron to guide this process. Take time. There is no rush. It is time for it now to awaken within and for you to start to read and meditate on its presence within you. So much Kundalini teaching has focused on the chakras and these are hugely important. But the next step is sensing this bliss-like energy as it curls up your spine and back, releasing and purifying, and being able to take you to higher states of consciousness than you had previously thought possible. An awakened, upgraded chakra system results also. Look at this image on the card and absorb its colours and energy. Let it show you the state of your own kundalini energy. Dormant, awake or half awake. There is no judgment and no right or wrong. It is part of you. Integrate it and own it. It's there to help your spiritual path by igniting fire, colour and light within you to help you see, feel, hear and taste with kaleidoscope senses. What an extraordinary hidden asset. Let Metatron unveil it for you at the right time and in the right manner. A truly awakened spirit awaits. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. I wish you a blessed 11-11.
I wish you a blessed life and I wish you uh, an abundance of energy. Take care, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Please like this video if you have liked it, share it. Thank you for any purchases of sprays, donations, super thanks. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. Thank you. Bye-bye for now. Bye.